أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على حبيبه محمد وآله وسلم السلام عليكم and welcome to our segment on Surah Yunus. Inshallah, today we will cover the last ruku of the surah, which is ruku 11, verses 104 to 109. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the 11th ruku of Surah Yunus. Verse 104. Kulia ayyuhan nasu in kuntum fi shakin mendini fala abudul lazina tabuduna mendun lahi walakin abudul laha lazi yetawafakum wa umirtu an akuna minal mu'mini. Say, O mankind, if you are in stress of my law, that I do not worship those which you worship besides Allah. But I worship Allah, the one who causes your death, and I have been commanded to be of the believers. In this verse, we see the word shakin, which means stress or something that causes stress. If there is doubt in anyone's heart about Islam or what the Quran says, it doesn't really affect the belief of Allah's messengers or those who believe. Those who doubt the truth should take the time and reflect upon the system of the universe and themselves and its creation, and then ask themselves, who else can be declared with the title of worship besides Allah? Allah is a true creator and owner of everything, and he provides all his creatures with the resources they need for their development and livelihood. The system of the universe is running under the laws made by Allah and the system of life and death is in his hands. Therefore, success can only be achieved by dutifully following Allah's commands. As stated in Surah Al-Nisa in verse 125, where it says, And who is better in deen than one who submits himself to Allah? while being a doer of good and follows the deen of Abraham, inclining towards truth. And Allah took Abraham as an intimate friend. Let's go on to verses 105 and 106. وَأَنْ أَكِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ and direct your face toward the religion, resolute, and never be of those who associate others with Allah. وَلَا تَدْعُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يَدُرُّكَ فَإِنْ فَأَلْتَ فَإِنَّكَ إِزَّمْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And do not invoke, besides Allah, that which neither benefits you nor harms you. For if you did, then indeed you would be of the wrongdoers. This verse is commanding us to stay upright and be unwavering when believing and following the deen. Only Allah is the one to be worshipped, and anything we do should be care of Allah and nothing else. And this is also mentioned in Surah al bayyana in verse 5. Worshipping anything else besides Allah puts us in the category of the mushrikeen, and committing shirk is strictly forbidden. As stated in this verse, it would make us the zalimin, those who are of the wrongdoers. Allah is the true creator and owner of everything, including all of us. It is he who provides us and sustains us with the many resources that we see and use. He gives us life and causes us death, and then revives us. How can we claim ownership of anything that we have not created? And the things that we do create, we need the resources provided to us by Allah to create them. So we should ask ourselves, who is more greater to worship? Allah or the things created by us? This fact is repeated in Surah Al-Furqan in verse 3, where it says, 
But they have taken besides him gods, which create nothing, while they are created, and possess not for themselves any harm or benefit, and possess not death or life or resurrection. Let's go on to verse 107. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ وَإِيُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَأَدَّ لِفَدْلِهِ يُسِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ إِبَادِي وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except Him. And if He intends for you good, then there is no repeller of his bounty. He causes it to reach whom he wills of his servants, and he is the forgiving, the merciful. Allah has set a law for everything, and all the affairs of the universe work within that. The reality of good things and sorrows that come to us is described in Surah Al-Nisa in verse 79, where it says, What comes to you of good is from Allah, but what comes to you of evil is from yourself, and we have sent you to the people as a messenger, and sufficient is Allah as a witness. Therefore, the best course of action for us is to account for our own deeds and keep seeking forgiveness from Allah. Let's go on to verse 108. <laughs> فَإِنَّمَا يَحْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ دَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَدِلُّ عَلَيْهَا وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِوَكِيلٌ Say, O mankind, certainly the reality has come to you from your Lord. So whoever is guided is only guided for his soul, and whoever goes astray only goes astray against it. And I am not over you a manager. The Qur'an is the message of truth and guidance for all mankind, provided to us through the mediation of the Holy Prophet It is up to us now to accept it or not. We are responsible for our own actions, and nobody else is accountable for what we do. This is also mentioned in Surah Al-Zumar in verse 41. It's important to make a habit and constantly ask ourselves before starting to do something, if it will benefit our nafs or harm it, that is, will it lead us to the gardens of paradise or the fire of hell in this world and the hereafter? If we do something for the sake of Allah, for the sake of his creation, then we can be absolutely sure that we are headed in the right direction. If we do something for the sake of just our own selves, then we must take a step back and reevaluate ourselves before going further. Let's go on to verse 109. What the be ma yuha eleka? Waspir hatta Yahkumallahu Wahua Hirul Hakimi. And follow what is inspired to you, and be steadfast until Allah gives judgment. And He is the best of judges. The highest source of knowledge through which Allah conveys His message to His beloved servants is through his inspirations. The Qur'an itself is a collection of inspirations conveyed to the Holy Prophet Following these inspirations is obligatory on the prophets and also on the believers. Once an inspiration is received, understood and acted upon, it is necessary that the mission of conveying the truth continues with full effort regardless of any opposition. Any hardship or obstacle along the way should be faced by being steadfast and putting trust only in Allah. The outcome is in his hands, and he will decide as he sees fit. This concludes Ruku 11, our last segment of Surah Yunus. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. It is the duty of Allah's messengers to communicate the message of truth, to his servants. The message of truth is that servitude belongs to Allah, the one and only. Therefore, success can only be achieved by obeying his commands. 
Through the blessing of Allah, the truth has been bestowed upon us in the Holy Quran. So whoever follows it does so for his own benefit, and whoever rejects it brings upon pain and suffering for himself. Messengers of Allah convey the message but are not responsible for the individual actions of people. Everyone is accountable for their own deeds. Following the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is our only means of salvation. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Amin. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqullahul Aliyulazim. Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyun wa alihi wa sallam.